We're broadcasting in HD from our new set, so uh, we had to apply the makeup. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Young, along with legendary coach Max Howell. Welcome to Game Day TV. Max, a jam-packed weekend already. Well, it is. We got a few highs and a few lows, and of course, we ended last night with uh, several lows, I think. But uh, it really excited about where we're going, Jerry. All right, let me tell you what's happening uh, this uh, show here on Game Day TV. We're going to review the uh, top games for this past weekend, and of course, uh, we're going to introduce our highs and lows, and you already guessed who those are. We're going to do uh, Fan Blitz. This, today, this show is for Auburn and UAB. We're going to have Don and Tripp, Tripp from UAB and Don from Auburn. They'll be on as well. We'll do the high school report. We'll, be, we'll review the top games uh, coming up this week as well. We'll have game day weather with Kim Shera, and then Max will end up with what's for dinner. What's for supper? Oh yeah, you got to go southern. You know, the southern thing is what it's right, all about. Right. You understand that? And again, I want to pass on to the listeners out there, Jerry. The fact is, is we're going to hit the top games, and I know we have so many ball games. We kind of time constraint won't allow us to get into that. I know we some fans want to know why we didn't get into in depth in some of the other show, uh, programs on this show. But the fact is, we're going with the top games that we saw this past weekend. That's right. All right. When we come back, we're going to start it off with reviewing the top games of this past weekend. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back here on Game Day TV. You can travel all over and you won't find another town with our name or our frame of mind. So much to do, so much to see. The one and only. Thank you. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. When you're in business, you need to stay as visible as possible. Have you ever thought of turning your vehicle into a marketing tool? Well, now you can with high-impact, full-color graphic vehicle wraps from Sundown Tent and Design. Turn your car or truck into a moving billboard to reach new customers all day, every day. From design to expert installation, Sundown Tent and Design is a vital tool in your marketing arsenal to keep your business in the public eye. Learn more at sunwraps.com or call them at 205-337-3691. Sportsmanship is the educational component um, derived from athletic contest. And sportsmanship enhances the character of student athletes because of the impact of the leaders of each sports team. Those leaders help develop the character of those student athletes to be displayed in times of adversity. How do you show love? With the big things? The little things? The tough things? Your everything. Show them you care. Alpha Insurance. As we said, a big weekend of college and high school football, but nothing bigger than one of our sponsors right now, and that's Central State Bank. Central State Bank is your bank in Jefferson and Shelby County. They have checking, loans, mortgages, 
they all got you covered there. And then you can access online and by mobile banking, banking as well. If you need any help, they got personalized service uh, at all of their locations. So check them out in Central Alabama at Central State Bank, your bank in Shelby and Jefferson County. Well, Max, let's get right into it here as we're going to talk about the highs and the lows. Okay, that's a new little segment here on Game Day TV. Got to start with the lows, can we, please? Do we have enough time, Jerry? I'm telling you. All right. Well, we were, let's just go ahead. The elephant in the room, Texas A&M last night, the biggest debacle. Uh, I think I saw, at one time I saw it was the worst uh, loss come back in NCAA, but then we updated that this morning. It's the second one, but who cares? It was a big loss. It was. Our research and development department brought the facts up for That's us. That's right. That. You know, again, I, I've known those guys for a long time, and uh, we'll start on the defensive side. Uh, it takes his A&M with John Chavis, and I remember when John Chavis played at Tennessee, by the way. Had a great career there with Phil Fulmer, and uh, the last couple of years before Coach Fulmer stepped away, he went to LSU. And uh, he and Les Miles, you know, had a, a cozy relationship. And LSU played good defense at that time. Then Kevin Sumlin lures him away a couple of years ago. And for the last two years, and I was asked this morning on a radio show, Jerry, about is it, is it John Chavis or is it the concept? And I, I've contended for so many years that when the head football coach has one mindset, then normally that permeates the rest of the staff. How did Kevin Sumlin get to Texas A&M, he got there via Houston by throwing the football and running up big scores. So, Quant, he's an offensive-minded guy. That being the case, defense kind of sets, kind of has to take a step back. And I think in the recruiting is where it all shows up. And certainly it's happened there. Uh, the first couple of years that, that uh, Kevin Sumlin was there, they got along pretty well and won eight or nine along the way. Then along comes Johnny Menzel, Mr. Football. So they could get away by winning 48-40, to 40, and that's exactly what happened. And he won the ball game. He, they go live in two his senior year. He wins a Heisman. But since that time, the defense personnel has just not been up to, to standard in what it takes to play in the SEC. Uh, basically, the offense cr- crumbled, and the defense couldn't stop anybody. Take nothing away from UCLA. The Rosen kids going to probably be the first quarterback taken in the draft this year. Uh, an outstanding. We saw him throw off his back foot. We saw him throw on the run. He could throw it anywhere and had a wide receiver wide open. And I, that goes to the coaching side, basically, as far as, A&M, uh, as far as Texas A&M is concerned. So, you know, you look at that elephant. How do you lose? Go, you're ahead by 44 to 10 going into the third, uh, middle of the third quarter. And then they, they score 35 unanswered points on you, and you don't do anything about it. And here's the thing, and you and I sit there and talked about that last I'm night as we watched the game. Why do you get away from your basic game plan? Your first quarterback goes down. You bring a redshirt freshman in to play. What does he do? He lines up and throws the ball down the field every snap. Run the ball. That's, How many that's, times has that been said in this state? And, Run and, Jerry, the ball. On top of that, that's what got them to where they were, 44 points ahead right. at one time, or, 44, or 34 ahead. So, you know, you look at all those things that happen inside the, the concept. And I said to you earlier this morning, at some point in time, an athletic director has to point out, and I, I'm taking a step back in, in viewing the situation that Kevin Sumlin has found himself in, that court was on the hot seat going in. And I just heard on, on a, a national television show recently this morning that the, hit, the athletic director had called Coach Sumlin in this summer. says, look, the administration's not happy. You've had some conflicts on your staff. You've had personnel of uh, five quarterbacks that have been drafted at, from the top of your class transfer out, that just unrest going on. You have to clean that up, and you better step it up on the win-loss count. Call him. What does he do? He go out there and loses big time. And I think uh, certainly didn't hit his status. And on the national stage, too. You know, oh, when I is. call ball games in high school, anytime it's a big game like that or whatever, my f- most favorite saying is, are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, last night I had that <laughs> are you kidding me kind of moment. We just couldn't we could couldn't believe what we were seeing and how Texas A&M could crumble like that. But do you take it away from Texas A&M or do you give it to UCLA because they may be better than we think? I think there's enough blame to go around. I'll be honest yeah. with you. I think it, it could go either way because Jim Moore was doing his seat was just as hot uh, as Kevin Sumlin's and said his team came back and won. Here, here's why you know things are not. Uh, going right for you. You got a second team quarterback in there, a red shirt, uh, excuse me. You got a first team quarterback at, at, at uh, UCLA in there. You got the second team quarterback in at, at AM. 
everything goes right for, for, with this starter out there. He's throwing off his back foot. He's running for his life. And everything he throws is caught and scored. You've got to give that to a downside on the defensive side. Then on the other side, what about when you get the young freshman in there, you get away from turning and handing the ball off, running it with the concept of that's how you got to score 44 points, yeah. and everything goes wrong. Uh, and he tries to run the football. Their defense, I, I do believe now, hindsight's always 20-20, as you know. But as I look back, UCLA now, they were licking their chops when the young quarterback came in. They knew they would win the football game. I'm convinced of that now. So, anyway, that uh, to me, that squared up. It looks like Jim Moore's stock went up, and certainly Kevin, uh, Kevin Sumner's stock went down. All right, let's move on to Texas now. Not to stay in the state of Texas, but fortunately enough, everybody in Alabama won. Everybody in Texas lost. That's another – Wow. What do you say? Uh, you know, Tom Herman, that's another one that came out of Houston, highly recruited. Well, he's actually started his career at Ohio State with, uh, with Urban Meyer. Had a, a national championship on his belt. Goes to Houston, have a couple of good years. Was rumored to be every coaching job last year that was open. Herman's name came up. The, the one that everybody in the SEC thought he was going to take was LSU. Uh, Les Miles had been dismissed after the second game. Ed Ogeron was in as an interim, and he still had a few clouds of uncertainty around him. But the fact is, Texas fires Charlie Strong, which we all saw coming. He fires him. All of a sudden, Texas reaches and writes a check. This, I don't know how many, how many zeros in seven figures. I yeah. mean, it's a lot. So Six. anyway, he gets a, huge, he gets a huge number to come to Texas. And what happens? He goes out there, and Maryland just hammers him, really. And I guarantee the folks at, in Baton Rouge was grinning. They were happy they didn't take him. I'll be honest with you. All right, let's with. move on on the Lowe's list and – Oh, well, Max, is tight. listen, he's going to take his big old boot. I'm going to wonder how in the world that big old boot could fit all up in this mouth. You had Florida all the way. They fooled you, didn't they, Max? Unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm apologizing. Really, I'm apologizing to the Georgia fans and the Tennessee fans and the others in the SEC East. I just saw Florida has been able to, uh, to, to really – Come past where they were. I know they had nine or ten NFL draftees this past year, but their recruiting had been reasonably good in the state of Florida. Having recruited that state for several years, I pretty well understand how it is to get the good get the kids to go. So, as they move forward in that ball game, I'm I'm starting to watch, and and I had two train of thoughts. You and I talked about this. One right. train of thought was that Jim Harbaugh is a good football coach. He'd done a, several things around that borderline on. Uh, upsetting the NCAA and also a lot of the coaches. He'd hold camps, and even in this state, in Alabama, they went, went in Prattville and held a camp, yeah. and I, Coach Saban just went through the roof on that. But right. he, the rules didn't allow him to do that and did not prohibit it. But now that is being the process of being changed. He had done that all over the country. He really brought the hype back to Michigan. But, guys, here's the thing that, that I overlooked, and I think a lot of other people. His recruiting classes were g really good. A lot of them didn't rank in the top one or two or three, but I'm telling you, on the field, I told you the last on, on the field coaching job I had, we took a team from Ole Miss down to Gator Bowl, and we played a team from Michigan that looked just like that one Saturday. They beat us. I mean, it was, I knew, I knew we would beat when the band was on the field. <laughs> the team was so, the band was so big that the field the tilted. And that's exactly what happened. Those kids, not only are they traditional Big Ten football players, 6'5", 3'20", 3'30", but they can run. And all that came about in the recruiting with Harbaugh, with Urban Meyer at Ohio State, and James Franklin at Penn State. They had all been in this part of the country. They understand the big football players that can run. All right, the lows, Texas, Florida, and Texas A&M. Now let's move over to the highs. Let's start with LSU, Max. LSU, uh, Orgeron, just a perfect fit. Yeah. Everybody's been saying that. As long as he keeps winning, it'll be a perfect fit. Yeah. But good job by LSU. And, and this is not ironic, is it? LSU plays BYU. Of course, that came down to a controversy where they're going to have to play. They ended up playing in New Orleans. That was a home field advantage for LSU. We know that. But you and I had watched BYU the week before, knowing that they really wasn't a very strong team. But here's a, a number that escaped a lot of people in the media. Ed Ogeron had dismissed, had suspended 12 players. Right. Florida got the credit for, for suspending 10. LSU started six pure freshmen, uh, either on offense and defense. That is a huge number in, a, in an opening ball game. But they did and got away with it. Uh, let me just tell you how good their defense was. BYU never got to the 50-yard line any, at any time. Their total offense was 75 yards. Um, my best personal friend coaches a defensive front there. And uh, he and I have talked so many times. He knew they were going to be pretty good. But they literally – 
LSU was out their best defensive player, might be the best outside linebacker in America with an injury. So they substitute a freshman for him. What do they do? Don't miss a beat. So LSU's going to be very, very good, I think, this year. Ogeron brought in Matt Canada from Pittsburgh. Their offense shifts and moves around. I did read yesterday they only showed 10% of their offensive plays in that ball game. So all I can say is those guys that's on the LSU schedule, you better look out because they're coming. All right, let's move on to Auburn. Question mark with Chip Lindsey, who is uh, uh, a good friend. We're so excited that he's in back in the state. He comes from Arizona State out to run the offense for Gus Malzahn. Auburn looked pretty good. They really did. And, again, take nothing away from Georgia Southern. Uh, they, they are strong. I've coached against that team when we were at Florida State. But the fact is is that, that Auburn suspended Petway, their starting running back, uh, Sean White, their number two quarterback, uh, and three or four others on Thursday of this week. So right. they didn't have anybody to plug in but the younger kids. However, they got away with it. Uh, Statham had an outstanding ball game. He threw the ball well. He ran the ball well. And uh, we'll get a chance now to see if Auburn can continue to improve down the road. Their running game will be stronger. Petway will be back this week. Right. Uh, Johnson, the number two guy, uh, really alternates with Petway as a running back. Uh, had a, I think he pulled a ham uh, string probably sometime in the third quarter. Uh, and he had to sit down, so they brought in some younger kids. Over and all, Auburn scored 41 points on the offense, only gave up six uh, on the defensive side. I think they'll be ready to play. they got a challenge coming up this week, and we'll talk about that later. All right, in the GOAT game, as has uh, uh, been referred to, whew, boy, Alabama showed up and showed up big, didn't they? They did. You know, and the first thing I read on Saturday was, uh, excuse me, on Sunday was, uh, you know, basically Jalen Hurts didn't perform like Let me tell you guys, they played the number one or two defense in the country in Florida State. They got beat up. Look, Alabama lost two starting linebackers for the year. Nobody knew that to this morning. Uh, they got beat up. I know Florida State lost their quarterback at the end of the game, and I really hate it when a kid goes down like that, but that was a very physical football game. And they talked about Jalen Hurts not being able to clear. They had one nice 45 or 50-yard pass down right. the field uh, to Wrigley, and he scores on that, on that play. But the fact is, Hurts had to run for his life. The offensive front has got some work to do. Right. Uh, it worked out. The good thing for Alabama, the next five weeks, they've got opponents out there. They're 35 and a half points favorite coming up this week. Uh, they'll be better and better at the, as the season goes along. But their defense, Jerry, their defense didn't miss a beat. They were as physical and they their covers. And the kicking game, special oh, teams were outstanding. They, it was. Now they they got to work on the field goal. That they should. The score should have been thirty to seven. Uh, it was twenty four to seven. But the fact is, they missed two field goals they should have made. But the fact is, they played enough, got and did enough. The fact is, they won the ball game. They won it convincingly. They move on. Florida State has to regroup now because of the quarterback situation. Good luck to both of them down the road. All right, Fan Blitz coming up next here on Game Day TV. It's uh, one of my favorite segments. We'll have somebody, a, a fan from UAB and from Auburn coming up here on Game Day TV. Thanks for watching. We'll be back here in just a moment. The trained staff at Sundown Tent Design are ready to work for you. Whether you're an individual looking for window tent or a business needing a vehicle wrap, Sundown has you covered. With high impact full color graphic design and expert in-house installation, they have the know-how to turn your car or truck into a moving billboard all day, every day. Contact them now to schedule a free design consultation. From window tinting to full vehicle wraps, Sundown Tent and Design is the only place to go. Visit them today at sundownwraps.com or call 205-337-3691. The one and only. Home. It's where you take your time. Build the future. Make your memories. Celebrate. Come home. Alpha Insurance. 
Participation in all extracurricular activities helps the development of the student athlete. While academics always come first, we consider extracurricular activities the co-curricular activity that can help develop the student athlete in their daily lives. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. All right, welcome back to Game Day TV. The segment that's become the most fun, the most popular, is Fan Blitz. That's when we give you, the audience, a chance to, uh, a whole minute, to say anything you want to say about your team. So, Max, let's start it off. Now, you know the rules. You I start it. it off. You hear him say something you don't like, you let me know. I'll penalize him, okay? But we got Tripp, uh, who is a UAB fan, okay? So that's where we're going to start. I mean, uh, you know, UAB back into football after a break and all that. Everybody knows the story. So here we go, Trip. You've got one minute to talk about UAB, and your time starts now. All right. I'd just like to start off to say first off what a great story it is. I just feel like this is one of those few, like, true American stories where it just shows that if you get enough people that care enough about something, uh, you know, you can you – can, you know, get it back, or, you know, you can achieve what you want to achieve. And UAB has done that with this 2017 football team. Uh, I think it speaks volumes to Bill Clark's character that he stayed to see this through. Uh, the seniors that stayed, uh, all these junior college transfers that came here uh, to, to start something back fresh, uh, I just think that it says a lot about who they are. Uh, and obviously, I think this is one of the more talented UAB teams that we've all, that we've ever had, that we've ever fielded. I think that we stand a chance to 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 do to do well and bring us back on a good note. Uh, obviously, the the new athletic facility is a great start. Uh, you know, I think that this this team can get things moving Time. back in the right direction. That's it. Hey, thanks, Trip. Thank trip. <laughs> hey, Max didn't interrupt you, so yeah, everything you right on. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Trip. Yeah. All right, that's Trip from UAB uh, doing the fan blitz. So uh, that's where we stand on that. We'll move on now to Max. And Max, what do you think about what he said? Oh, I, I agree with him 100%. But Bill Clark's one of our favorite guys. Remember, you and I followed Bill Clark from my hometown from Prattville, Alabama, won uh, three state championships there. And he, then he went to South Alabama, then Jacksonville State. He's won everywhere he's been. I have no reservation about Bill Clark handling the program. And literally, when you recreate a program like they're having to do at UAB, it starts with the head guy. It's all about the administration, how they, they relate to the new players. He talked about the guys that stayed. They stayed two years without a program. Those guys must better be the best conditioned team in America because all they had to do was work out in the weight room for two years. So uh, thank you, Tripp, for, for your remarks. I think you were right on. All right, we move on now to Auburn. An Auburn fan, we've got Don on the line. He claims to be an Auburn fan. Hey, uh, Don, just to make sure, because we got to verify you're an Auburn fan, I'm yes, going to ask you a question just to make sure you know we can prove that you're an Auburn fan. Um, who was the most famous, uh, uh, who's the coach that, uh, no, let me back up. Who's the most famous coach of all time at Auburn? Uh, I'd say uh, Pat Dye. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah. Or Chuck Jordan, take your pick. Okay, well, that's a confirmed Auburn fan, right, Max? <laughs> I guarantee you. All right, here's the, here's the deal, morning. Don. You're going to put a timer up. You're going to have 60 seconds to say whatever you want to say about the Auburn Tigers. At the end of 60 seconds, we'll cut you off. If you mess up, Max is going to get on to you, okay? Yes, sir. All right, here you go. Three, two, one, start. 
I think Auburn will beat Clemson by at least nine points, and the reason I say that is Auburn's key is the is the defense. Coach Dill. Coach Steele shut down Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern, I think, was 0 for 15 on third down conversions. And on offense, even though Jarrett Stidham had a little rust on him because he hasn't played in two years, he finished 24, 14 of 24, 185 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Uh, Cam Martin carried the ball 14 times for 136 yards and a touchdown. It's it hurt. Beyond Johnson, but hopefully uh, Cam Petway will be back in the lineup next week. And he's six, he's six foot two forty. He can carry the ball maybe forty times. And I think Auburn's defense will be the key to Auburn's victory over Clemson by at least nine points, maybe more. And I'm looking forward to the game, and hopefully we uh, we can get a shutout over Clemson. Um, think. Okay, that's all you get, Don. Hey. All right. And once you. again, Coach Max did not interrupt you, so uh, I have a lot of respect for Don. That's I, first right. First of all, I that's do. right. Don's one of those uh, very knowledgeable <laughs> Auburn fans. All right, well, where you go, guys? Oh, I knew he's going to get that in there. Thank you, Don. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right, buddy. All right, Coach. So you got Auburn. You got UAB. Let's. While we're on Auburn, let's just move on into the Auburn Clemson game. Don, Auburn fan predicts a nine-point victory. Well, that's, you know, that's, they're a six-and-a-half-point underdog going in, so that's a 15-point swing right there. That's, mm-hmm. And I, here's the thing, and I know Don, he loves Auburn, he wants to be very positive. Here's the thing from a casual observer about the program up to now, is the fact is that Clemson returns the best defensive front in America. It ain't like Georgia Southern. I got news for you. Uh, not so much Auburn's defense has got to shut them down because Clemson does – I think they do replace – uh, John Watson with a young freshman, uh, excuse me, and a, a guy that's inexperienced, not a freshman. I believe he's a junior academically. But the fact is, is he had a great game this past week. But their defense is what's going to win the ball game for Clemson if that happens. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and pick right now. I, I like to think from an SEC standpoint, Auburn can go there and win. And we've talked about this before, Jerry. If Auburn can go into Clemson to win, I think they got a pretty clear sailing until they get to LSU. they got LSU and Alabama left. Not demeaning anybody else on the schedule, but that's the two toughest games physically that they're going to have. Clemson's going to be tough. Going into Clemson, I've coached on that field before. That is a tough place to play. Here's the thing that fans may not realize. Clemson, South Carolina, is like the 15th or 20th populated town in, a, right. in the state until they play football. They become the third. Well, there's 90,000 people go in on a two-lane road. I, it's not going to the ball game at Clemson. It's getting out of town right. is what's the worst part. But they got a good football. Devil Swinney has done a remarkable job, won a national championship last year. Here's a lot of, another thing I think many people overlook. Their coaching staff, they've got three guys that's on that staff at Clemson, was on that staff at Florida State with, when I was there. Guys that know how to recruit. They know where to go find the top players, and they've done that. Co- re- recruiting to a small town like Clemson, South Carolina, it's a tough go. I mean, go to people like in Starkville, Mississippi, and ask them. Go to Oxford. Recruiting to Tuscaloosa or to Auburn has had not so much time, but has had great success. Is easier than it is to try to find a program that's on the rise, let's say. Clemson's definitely there. And then a small town with no social life to live. And I think that's what they run into in their recruiting. But they've overcome that. So I, I, like, I like Auburn in this. I don't know by nine. Uh, I, would, I think they'd be happy if they get away with a one-point win. Well, Clemson also, Max, has built the facilities there. They've got yes, an they entertainment town in itself there on campus, so that's a good deal. Well, let's move on now as we go to Georgia and Notre Dame. Now, are you a big uh, – let's talk about Georgia, <laughs> Max. You've been trashing them on every show. You said Florida's a team to beat. Now I did. You, well, now, now what you're saying, and also going to Notre Dame. Well, here's the thing. Georgia, Georgia played Appalachian State. Now, Appalachian State's the top team in the Sun Belt Conference. We all understand that. Uh, however, let's, let's talk about the controversy that's already been created. Uh, Jason Neeson, the starting quarterback last year as a pure freshman, goes out uh, with the injury. Uh, the Fromm kid comes in, was one of the most highly recruited quarterbacks in the country out of the state of Georgia. Uh, comes in to take it over. Doesn't it mean they got the Chubb kid, they got the Michelle, two outstanding running backs. Their defense played lights out this past Saturday. But guys, I'm telling you, they're still the offensive front. It's going to be a, a question until come together. They got only two young kids on there, but they got a, a, a junior and a senior, I believe, but have not had great playing time in numbers. So I think when you go to South Bend, Indiana, it's not so much what happens as the game played, 
But guys, it's the mystique of the field. If you've never been to South Bend, I'm telling you, when you look down, you've got Jesus standing in the end zone. That, that makes people stop to think. I'm going to tell you. Right. It's a, it's a unique situation. One of the most storied stadiums in America. I believe that stadium was actually built in the 20s. And, of course, they still use it uh, up to date now. Notre Dame's not a great team th this year, even though they won pretty big this past weekend over Temple. The fact is, is that Notre Dame is Notre Dame. They are who they are. Georgia goes in, and a lot of those kids that's going to make that trip from Athens, Georgia, to South Bend, Indiana, never been out of the state of Georgia. So that's going to be a unique experience within itself. I like Georgia in a close, close ball game, mm. but they're going to have to play hard, and we get a really good read on my take on how Georgia goes from here down the, down the road. All right, well, move on to another team that kind of surprised all of us in a little bit, not really, but South Carolina. Whew. They did a lot better than a lot of people thought, and they're playing Missouri. <laughs> Lord of mercy, what a ball game that was. Yeah, uh, I, you know, Jerry, I think the South Carolina win – uh, I picked South Carolina over there in an upset, but that was just because I'm a big SEC fan. I didn't know they could play that well. I'm more impressed with the Bentley kid at quarterback than I have any kid. Here's a kid. You're talking about unique. Will Muschamp comes into Alabama, open like Alabama, to sign a quarterback. I've heard of kids coming out at Christmas and enrolling early and take their last semester that they should have been in high school and they go to college. This kid came out at the end of his junior year. Right. He finished already finished high school then and actually goes into uh, Columbus, South Carolina, wins the start, red shirts, and wins the starting job. Right. Did a remarkable job. Muschamp has got him in the head in the right direction. They'll, their defense will be tested this week uh, against Missouri. Anytime a quarterback can throw for seven touchdowns, can score 72 points and throw for over 500 yards, Jerry, you can't do that in practice uh, against the scout team. Right. So they won. That's what Missouri did. That, that's who South Carolina's defense has got to stop. You know, we've been talking about defenses all day. It's like Texas A&M. <laughs> Theirs didn't show up. It's right. like Missouri's. They didn't show yeah, up. Very true. Uh, so defense wins championships. Absolutely. That might just say it in a mouthful right there. Okay. The other game we want to cover is TCU and Arkansas. Arkansas – they're, well, they're just kind of stuck out there, They are, Max. and here's the thing that a lot of people hadn't really stopped to realize. Arkansas is only a one-and-a-half-point one favorite at home against TCU. Look, you give them three points regardless at home. Arkansas lost two starters la uh, last week. They lost their best cover corner, and they lost a return guy. It's going to be an interesting ball game. Would not surprise me one bit to see TCU come away with a win. If they do, Bielema goes on the same seat that Kevin Summers got. Well, I'm looking for Bielema to show up coaching a game one time with one of those little white dogs that his wife <laughs> yeah. carries around in his arm. That's his, look. Game. That's his good, luck, good luck charm. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to talk some high school now when we come back. High school going on all over the state. Some huge games, big victories, and we got a little uh, video of a, of a five-star, four-star running back from Mountain Brook you'll want to see as well. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Game Day TV. The unexpected. The inevitable. The inconvenient. Life can be difficult. Make it a little easier. Alpha Insurance. Participation in all extracurricular activities helps the development of the student athlete. While academics always come first, we consider extracurricular activities the co-curricular activity that can help develop the student athlete in their daily lives. never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her and she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. You can travel all over and you won't find another town with The one and only.
Game Day TV is so unique because not only do you get Max's insight on college football, but we also talk about high school here on Game Day TV. So let's start with 5A now. As we move down, uh, we're just going to hit some of the highlights because we've got a lot to talk about in 7A this week. But here's how they broke down. Number 10, Brooks. Uh, they actually lost. Winona won. Eufaula lost. Viger lost. They play Citronelle this week. Uh, Central of Clay County is undefeated. Carroll at number five. Uh, they won as well. Alexandria at four. St. Paul's is at three. Briarwood Christian with a big win. They remain at two. And Beauregard uh, with a loss. We'll see how that changes coming up later this week in 5A. Now in 6A, you've got uh, number 10, Park Crossing. They had a loss, so we'll see if they stay in the top 10. Muscle Shoals in Florence, while I'm on that, we'll just tell you, it's a big rivalry game up in North Alabama. We're actually going to be on the radio this week talking about that up there as well. So, Max, those two teams, historically defense, that's going to be a good matchup. It will be. And, I, you know, the, the station out of Florence, Alabama, they cover, them, they cover them from head to toe. So, I'm pleased to say that we'll, we'll cover that game for next week, sure. All right, Daphne will be uh, coming in at number seven. They play Sarah Land down in South Alabama. Then one of the teams is getting a lot of press. That's Pinson Valley, mainly because Patrick Nix is their quarterback. His son, Bo, the sophomore, lit up the sidelines, lit up the field this past week. They go to minor this week and play, look for another win there from Pinson Valley. Opelika, one of my favorite teams. Caleb Ross got those guys playing. They go to Carver Montgomery this week. Then Oxford plays Brewer. Blunt stays on their winning ways. They play Baldwin County. Austin, big win for them. They go to Decatur. They beat Bob Jones. We're going to talk about Bob Jones coming up in just a minute. But they'll probably take over the number one spot because Ramsey, uh, they got beat by Pinson Valley. They'll drop down a little bit. Still a good team, though. Don't worry about them. They'll be on. So the big thing coming out of uh, 6A, the change, is we'll have a new number one this week and also Pinson Valley playing well. So let's move on to 7A now, Max, and a lot of big games, a lot of uh, big teams coming up. You know, and, I, and again, I, time restraint keeps us from really going into a lot of detail, but you went down to Atlanta this past weekend and watched Mountain Brook play. I and, did. And we, we're going to talk about a, a player from now and then, but this one you saw coming up this week, one of the top players in the country Absolutely. plays at Mountain Brook. Well, uh, yeah, his name's Harold Joyner. And Harold Joyner stands 6'3", weighs 218 pounds. All right, he's being recruited by – pretty much everybody, Alabama and Auburn included. However, he did announce that he dropped LSU and uh, Georgia from his list, so something there he didn't like. But Alabama and Auburn still in the mix. Um, he's the number five uh, running back in the country right now. That tells you a lot. Right, and, uh, and 138 pick overall. So you see him there on your screen. You see some of the touchdowns he ran and how he can move the ball. So that's a, a big Big, big player for Mountain Brook. Speaking of Mountain Brook, we'll just move straight on in to 7A now. As 7A is going to be jam-packed this week as well. Uh, the, we'll start down at the bottom there at Bob Jones. Now, I won't say Bob Jones is a disappointment. Bob Jones played two tough teams. But Kevin Rose up there, and let's just go ahead and throw it out there. He's going to James Clements. James Clements, ranked number six in the state. That is one of the biggest games that you'll ever go to in high school. So I'm going to tell you, if you're in Madison County, uh, uh, you need to go to that ball game. It's at the city stadium there. They even have a fireworks display afterwards. Well, you'll be there. Right? I'll be there. That's yeah. where I'm going this Friday night is to Bob Jones, James Clemens. James Clemens comes in undefeated, ranked number six. They beat Gardendale last week 26 to 14, so a pretty impressive show there. Number nine is Enterprise. Uh, they go to Prattville. And uh, they beat Northview, or lost to Northview, I should say. Prattville showed a little life this week. Prattville did good, even though they're not in the top 10, but that's going to be a top 10 ball game next week. We'll see how that goes as well. Another huge ball game is Auburn and Central Phoenix City. Jamie <laughs> Dubose got those guys going. Uh, Kevin Weingarten is uh, the, the coach at Auburn, the highest paid coach, by the way, in the state of Alabama now. So, uh, and By the way, just for what it's worth, if you hadn't checked Sauer as a high school coach later, if I wasn't old as I am, I'd go back. That's right. Okay. I'm telling you. it's uh, and, and, you know, Max, just to hit on that just a little bit, we know that we knew this several years ago. We, we got it. Yeah. We understood it. Sure. In high school now, it's not comparing it to college, but you've got to promote your team, whether you're a public school or private school or not. 
If you want to be successful, you've got to have the dollars from your local community sure. to help support it. It gets equipment, it gets better practice facilities, it gets everything. These coaches get it. That's why they're worth the money that they're paying them. All right, Spain Park, big win this week. They are uh, uh, playing Vestavia Hills, who lost last week. So uh, we'll see how Buddy and company does at Vestavia, but Spain Park is for real this week as well. Number six, James Clemens, like I mentioned, to go to Bob Jones. McGill Tulin goes to Murphy down in South Alabama. Uh, they're continuing their winning ways. And then a team that I cannot quit talking about is Hewitt Trussell. Josh Floyd is loaded this year. Uh, four teams to me stand out, maybe five and seven, eight. But this is one of them, Hewitt Trustful. Uh, they go to uh, Gadsden City. We know we mentioned them a time or two in the high school segment already. Max, that's going to be a good, good ball game as well. Thompson playing Tuscaloosa County. Now they took a week off. They were off this they past did. week. They yeah. did. And, uh, and, and so uh, they didn't play. But Thompson, we all know we can keep harping on Thompson uh, and Mark Freeman. But until Thompson proves me wrong, you know, we're, we're getting into the meat of it now. Hoover, as we just mentioned, Mountain Brook. Hoover and Mountain Brook. Hoover comes back to the state play. Their first game in the state of Alabama this week. So Hoover looking to knock off Mountain Brook. I watched Mountain Brook this Friday, past Friday night in person. Mountain Brook's a good, good ball team. And Joyner is a good running They went to Meridian, and, and I had already seen Meridian in their opening game we won. I told you last week I thought Hoover didn't win that. They did. They won big uh, in Meridian, Mississippi. So they do come home with a one and one record now, uh, ready to take on 7A. Should be an interesting year. Well, I'm going to keep saying the road to, to the Super 7 still got to go through Hoover. However, Hoover being in number two position by the Alabama Sports Writers Association, a little bit different for them because yeah. they're always used to being number one. But Jamie Dubose in Central of Phoenix City has moved up to number one, deservedly so. We're going to highlight a wide receiver yes, in a week we or two from from um, Central of Phoenix City. Jamie Dubos got some talent. Jerry, he's the real deal now. His kid's ranked in the top two or three wide receivers in America. We're right. talking about not just in Alabama. So uh, Jamie Dubos can put the, put the talent to work on the field. We've seen him win state championships. I think he's on the way to making a run at this year. Oh, I do too. They beat Fairfield 62 to nothing, folks, and he <laughs> called the dogs off. But that Auburn-Central Phoenix City game, you know, I can't be in two places at once. Had to choose between where we're going, but next week we'll be in Huntsville, so that's going to be big as well. So that's your high school report for this uh, this week. As I mentioned, a lot of big games. Uh, we're going to come back now. We're going to have Kim Shearer with your game day weather where you're going this coming Friday or Saturday. Max has got his famous What's for Supper, and also we're going to review the upcoming games on Saturday in college football. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more right here on Game Day TV. The trained staff at Sundown Tent Design are ready to work for you. Whether you're an individual looking for window tent or a business needing a vehicle wrap, Sundown has you covered. With high impact full color graphic design and expert in-house installation, they have the know-how to turn your car or truck into a moving billboard all day, every day. Contact them now to schedule a free design consultation. From window tinting to full vehicle wraps, Sundown Tent and Design is the only place to go. Visit them today at sundownwraps.com or call 205-337-3691. You can travel all over and you won't find Another town with our name or our frame of mind So much to do, so much to see It comes down to this, it's easy to see There's just one in the world positively Tuscaloosa, the one and only How do you show love? With the big things? The little things? The tough things? You're everything. Show them you care. Alpha Insurance. Participation in all extracurricular activities 
helps the development of the student athlete. While academics always come first, we consider extracurricular activities, the co-curricular activity that can help develop the student athlete in their daily lives. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her and she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. Celebrating 100 years of loyalty, friendship, integrity, that's Central State Bank. Central State Bank has you covered whether you want personal banking. They've got a great uh, crew there that always is very warm and open and inviting when you walk in. Of course, they have online banking. You can also do uh, banking uh, any way you want to as far as uh, whether you're on the go or whether you want to stop by and see them. So trust Central State Bank in Central Alabama for your bank here. They're a proud sponsor of Game Day TV. Well, let's move on now to our Game Day weather. Max, Kim Shera joins us now for where, what it's going to be like in your area, whether it be Friday or Saturday. Here's Kim Shera in our Game Day weather studio. Now that we've celebrated Labor Day weekend, that usually means cooler, drier air returns to Alabama. That's the case for this week. Looks like football weather is on its way. Alabama's at home this weekend with mostly sunny skies in T-Town. Right now we have a 0% chance of rain with a high of 84 and a low of 60. Auburn heads to Clemson, South Carolina. The weather in Death Valley will be sunny with a high of 80 and a low of 59. Also currently, 0% chance of rain. Weather shaping up to be pretty perfect for Friday night high school football across Alabama. North Alabama has our only chance of rain and that's just coming in at 10% right now. The high will be 77 with a low of 53. Central Alabama has no chance of rain with a high of 80 and a low of 56. And finally, the southern parts of Alabama have 0% chance of rain with a high of 87 and a low of 64. You don't want to go to the games without wearing your favorite game day clothing. For cute tops like this one, go see Amy at Helena Mercantile, located in Old Town Helena. See you next week on Game Day TV. Now, back to Max and Jerry. Thank you, Kim. And while, before we get into our big game reminders, Max, let me uh, invite you to follow us on Facebook. You can go to Ask Game Day TV on Facebook. Hit the like button button there on, on Facebook and you'll be able to watch this show not only on the Alabama Cable Network but also on our YouTube channel there through Facebook. So ask Game Day TV on Facebook. Well Max, let me tell you, you got big games coming up this week. Uh, let me just tell you a couple of high school games yes. just so you know. We mentioned Central of Phoenix City at Auburn. Sure. That's going to be a big game. Muscle shows up in Florence. That's a built-in rivalry. You got Hoover playing Mountain Brook which is a rivalry in itself, but it's also Hoover's first trip back into Alabama. And then the one that I'm going to, James Clements and Bob Jones. Bob Jones 0-2, James Clements 2-0. That's like the Alabama-Auburn thing. Just throw those records out. These kids, they live across the street from each other. They're coming to play. So that's your high school games coming up for Friday one night. One common thread I noticed, uh, these are all inner city rivals that's each, right. in each one of the towns you talked about. So that's right. really, and it really gets heated up at that particular time. Let's move on to college now. A lot of big games coming up in college. It is. Of uh, all the games that are being played, we're going to probably touch on three. The, the Auburn trip to Clemson is by far, in my opinion, b the biggest game for both schools. Uh, the fact is that Auburn really 
got a new quarterback, a new concept with offense where they got a running quarterback now that it hadn't had in the last couple of years. Throw it down the field very well. But they're going to beat up against probably one of the best defenses in the country, particularly Clemson's defensive front. Uh, unlike where this last year with Georgia Southern, Auburn's really got to work hard to win this game. They're a six-and-a-half-point underdog in this game. I like them in a close, close game if if everything goes. They can't lay it on the ground. Uh, Stidham can't throw a pick. He's got to play almost a perfect ball game. If Auburn can come away with a win, I see two more games. I think if they can beat Clemson, I see ten wins for them. I really do. I think LSU at the end, uh, middle of the, toward the end of the season, of course, and then Alabama uh, at Jordan-Hare. So uh, Auburn coming up this week, Auburn going to Clemson, a big game. The other one is we talked about earlier, Georgia going to Notre Dame. Right. Really a mystique game. Nobody kind of knows. You don't know how good Georgia is. The starting quarterback goes down in Eason. They bring in the Fromm kid who was a highly recruited high school kid coming out of Georgia two years ago. They like him a lot. you got Chum, the, one of the best running backs in the country. Uh, Michelle does a great job there. The defense played extremely well. Kirby Smart, a second-year guy, lost a couple of games from the sideline last year. Now he goes into a stadium that you're looking around, man, you don't know what the atmosphere is like. Well, he, the mystique has got to get to him as well. As, you, you I mean, he's played right. on a big stage, but still, there's no place like Notre Dame. It, no, no place like it. And every way he's ever played on a big stage, he was always, always the number two guy. Right. Now he's the number one guy, and every decision has to be a big one for him. And then the third one is it. The Arkansas TCU game, and the reason it is important for this week, TCU is a one and a half point underdog, but they're going into Fayetteville. Fayetteville's another place that's kind of hard to play. Uh, and I don't think there's any doubt everybody knows that Brett Bielema is on the hot seat. If he loses this game to TCU, which he's got a, a better than even shot to lose, he lost two starters the week before uh, against the Florida A&M team. They won by 49 to 7 in that particular ball game. But the fact is, if they lose this one, Bielema's going to find himself on the same hot seat with Kevin Sumlin. Uh, there's one more out there we'll get a chance to talk about at some point in time as the season goes on. But we know two right now that's really being looked at hard. I like Arkansas in a close one for only one reason. They are playing at home. So, you know, you look at those three right now. If I'm tuning in Saturday, I'm going to the TV side and watch all three of those. All right, let's go back to Auburn and Clemson just a little bit. If Auburn loses that game, it'll be how they lose it, yeah. whether or not the talk will start back up about Miles. I think you're absolutely right. And I think, I think Auburn's doing the best job in spinning where they are, what they've done, bringing a transfer quarterback, makes it, makes it work with their run-oriented offense. He can run and throw, the Steedham kid from Baylor. A great job. But by taking all of that, had a great spring game, threw four passes over 50 yards, scored on them in the spring game. But the fact is, they kind of the media has kind of taken Coach Malzahn off the hot seat. You let him go to Clemson and get beat, I think he goes right back in there. And, well, beat bad, I uh, think. I uh, think if they get beat on a last-second oh, field yeah, goal and the kids left it, it all on the field, yeah. I think they understand that. Sometimes the team is just better than you no matter what. But that's assuming that Clemson's going to win the game. And yeah. like you say, I kind of got a feeling Auburn, they know that they're on the big stage. If, if in fact, Jared, the hype is real. And, and, look, I've seen it both ways. You have two through your years. Sometimes it's generated and it's, uh, it's created. But I think Auburn's hype is real. You look at the roster. You look at uh, Petway coming back. He could have gone to the NFL. He came back. They get a good quarterback. They got four returning starters on the offensive side. The defense, Kevin Steele did a remarkable job last year with the defense. They only lost two guys that counted, the Adams kid and Carl Lawson. Everybody else is back and do it. So I, I think they got a legitimate chance, but they can't go up there and play like they on the big stage right. and choke up. They got to go up there and play that ball game to win. And knowing Chip Lindsay like I do, he'll be prepared too. I think that's a big plus for Auburn as well. Okay, Max, everybody wants to know every week. The, the, you're, you know, you've been doing this for so many years. I don't know how many recipes you got, but hey, Max, what's for supper? I will tell you this year, over 2,000. Uh, I've created two cookbooks out of it and may do another one. I'm going to do butterfly pork chops this weekend. Oh, and you know that. That's one of your favorites. Hmm. But I marinate that in an Italian dressing. The reason I do is an oil base with herbs. Gives you a spicy taste. And when I put them on the grill, about 350 to 400, I turn them pretty regular and I baste them every time. White meat on the grill will dry out in the middle, you know, quicker than anything. I like the thick ones there. I think it'll be well. Mashed potatoes. And on, with the mashed potatoes I'm going to go this week, uh -oh. a brown onion gravy. Hmm. And I'm telling you, 
Loaded with black pepper, you can't hardly beat that. I do a congealed salad and a reddish dish that goes with that. This week, jalapeno cornbread. Uh, I like that taste. You know I'm a, I like that hot taste in my cornbread just a little bit. For dessert, uh, I'm going to do a triple-layer German chocolate cake. And I'm telling you, I like my chocolate cake about an inch thick in chocolate. I like it straight warm from the oven. When you cut it, it just kind of falls to pieces. Now, if you're really hungry, you can dump a couple of scoops of ice cream on top of that. And maybe some pecans, too. And we'll do a little pecan to taste. Hey, I not? love that. And I then know. I'm going to wash all that down with a big old pitcher of sweet iced tea. All right, folks, that's this edition of Game Day TV. We talked about a lot coming up this week. You will want to tune in next week, Tuesday night at 7, or you can watch us on Facebook at Ask Game Day TV. We'll have the wrap-up of everything we talked about today, plus an, another edition of Big Games coming up this Saturday. For Max Howell, I'm Jerry Young. This is Game Day TV. Thanks for watching. home. It's where you take your time. Build the future. Make your memories. Celebrate. Come home. Alpha Insurance. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her and she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. Sportsmanship is the educational component derived from athletic contest. In sportsmanship enhances the character of student athletes because of the impact of the leaders of each sports team. Those leaders help develop the character of those student athletes to be displayed in times of adversity. When you're in business, you need to stay as visible as possible. Have you ever thought of turning your vehicle into a marketing tool? Well, now you can with high-impact, full-color graphic vehicle wraps from Sundown Tint and Design. Turn your car or truck into a moving billboard to reach new customers all day, every day. From design to expert installation, Sundown Tint and Design is a vital tool in your marketing arsenal to keep your business in the public eye. Learn more at sunwraps.com or call them at 205-337-3691.